okay so before recording uh, we have talked about uh, binarization and then thinning okay and uh, these are the spurious or false minutia structures or minutia points uh, that we have talked about and uh, here we uh, uh, extract the minutia points so should i repeat this uh, should i repeat these steps yes sir now you have understood or not so that i can start from the um, sir once repeat sir please okay so in uh, after after a uh, number of uh, pre processing steps uh, when we obtain the skeleton image or thin image oh, then sir. we apply yes sir we have uh, understood the minutia extraction we are just uh, asking for the whole recording no so uh, should i start from uh, matching step uh, so then we don't have thinning and uh, matching uh, sorry the uh, minutia extraction in the recording that's the thing then uh, or uh, would you uh, make another video adding that afterwards okay uh, as you as you are saying then we can start we can start from binarization again okay so until the last class uh, we have talked about a number of pre processing steps uh, that gives us uh, enhanced image so after gabor filtering we obtain uh, this enhanced image uh, from the original fingerprint image okay so uh, there were a number of steps uh, number of steps so after applying uh, those pre processing steps including gabor filtering we obtain this enhanced image okay so uh, this enhanced image is nothing but a gray level uh, gray scale image and uh, this image is a smooth image so gabor filtering is the low pass filter there gabor filtering uh, gives us the uh, gives us the uh, effect of the uh, low pass filter therefore this image will be this enhanced image should be found as the uh, smooth and image okay so after uh, after obtaining enhanced image uh, then we apply the binarization uh, process okay now what is binarization process in binarization process we obtain two different levels in the fingerprint image so one will one level uh, one level represent the black pixels and another level represent the white pixels okay that means the black uh, black pixels represent the ridges and white pixels will represent the valleys so uh, for this binarization process uh, we can use one useful property of gabor filter that is called the dc component of zero now what is dc component of zero now if we consider a gray scale image uh, any gray scale image uh, of certain rows and uh, certain uh, columns suppose the number of rows are m and number of uh, columns are n okay therefore m by n and n by uh, n m by 2 and n by 2 will give us the center of that uh, gray level uh, gray level image that means the mean value mean value will give us m by 2 and n by 2 and uh, uh, that mean value uh, represent the center of the pixel okay so suppose uh, the gray, gray level values are uh, gray level uh, values are uh, given uh, between uh, 0 and 255 okay now for all gray level values uh, we can obtain the mean value or the average pixel value of 0 so dc component of 0 means when we convert that gray level uh, image uh, into uh, into another image in frequency domain so in the frequency domain we obtain the fourier transform of that image in the fourier transform of that image at frequency 0 the at frequency 0 in the frequency uh, in, in the fourier transform we will have some value that is called the mean value or the average value which is obtained from the gray level image okay so uh, if we consider uh, if we consider a signal ft okay and uh, Uh, cos uh, cos 2 pi uh, cos 2 pi ft will give us 
uh, will give us one offset at f equals to zero. Okay, that means uh, in the frequency domain we obtain the Fourier transform of the given grayscale image at uh, fr uh, at frequency zero comma zero. That means since this is a two-dimensional uh, grayscale image, therefore at uh, frequency zero comma zero uh, zero comma zero in the Fourier transform we obtain some value and that value will represent the mean pixel value or average pixel value of zero in the grayscale image. Okay. Now this DC component of zero will be used as the global threshold. Okay. Now this global threshold will be used to obtain the binary image. Now this binary process involves uh, examining the gray level value of each pixel in the enhanced image. And if the value is greater than the global threshold, then the pixel value is set to binary value one, or uh, we can say uh, we we can say 255. Okay. Otherwise, it is set to zero. That means if we normalize the gray level values between zero and one, then uh, we obtain all the gray level values uh, between zero and one. Otherwise, we can set the we can set the we can say some pixel values to 255 and rest of the pixel values to zero that means uh, when we compare any pixel value in the uh, enhanced image after applying uh, after applying the double filter double filtering then uh, in that image uh, every pixel will be considered with the global threshold and if the pixel value is found to be less than that of the global threshold then uh, we will set or we will assign that pixel uh, pixel value zero okay so here zero means the black otherwise there is a, otherwise when we when we consider the pixel value is found to be greater than that of uh, global threshold then uh, that pixel value will be set uh, will be set as uh, 255 or will be assigned the gray level value 255 here 255 means the white pixel okay so in this way we can obtain two different levels so so, so depending upon the uh, global threshold or depending upon the DC component of zero value, we can obtain two different levels for ridges and valleys. Okay, so black pixels uh, will represent the ridges and white pixels will represent the valleys. So after binarization, uh, we can have the thinning operation. So in the binary image, uh, in the binary image, the, the width of the ridges uh, may contain more than one pixels. Okay, so we need to obtain single pixel oriented ridges. Single pixel oriented ridges means the width of the ridge will contain only one pixel. Okay, that is why we need to apply the thinning operation. And thinning after applying thinning operation, we obtain the skeleton image. And this thinning operation employs the erosion operation, which is a part of morphological operations or morphological algorithms. So thinning is basically a morphological operation. So that successfully erodes away the foreground pixel until they are uh, they are getting into one pixel wide. Okay. So we need one pixel wide ridges. So after thinning operation, we will obtain we will obtain a skeleton image and uh, this skeleton image is obtained after obtaining the binary image from the enhanced image. So this enhanced image is obtained after gavel filtering. So after applying gavel filtering, we obtain enhanced image. This enhanced image used as the input image uh, to the binarization process. And after binarization process, we obtain the binary image. And after applying uh, thinning operation, we obtain the thin image from the binary image. Now uh, we can see the regending and each bifurcation uh, very clearly in the thin image. Okay. Now here we can uh, here we can see some uh, minutia points uh, which are basically which are considered as the spurious minutia points or false minutia structures. So. Uh, so this is uh, this is the part of uh, this is a part of uh, post processing uh, step in the post processing step uh, we need to identify the false minutia structures or false minutia points uh, like four uh, like these four structures okay 
so these structures are called spar hole triangle and spike these are the basically the false minusia structures so we need to identify this false minusia structure during post processing operations okay now after uh, after uh, removing the false minusia points or false minusia structures from the set of uh, uh, from the fingerprint image then uh, we need to uh, extract the minusia points legitimate or valid minusia points so uh, there is a method called crossing number method which can be used to perform minusia extraction okay so in the minusia extraction we will consider only two different type of points one is the regenting another is the uh, ridge bifurcation okay now uh, we can employ this uh, we can employ this crossing number method uh, to extract the regentings and bifurcations from the uh, thin image or skeleton image by examining the local neighborhood of each ridge pixel using a 3 by 3 window okay now a crossing number uh, for a ridge pixel p will be given by half of the summation over the differences between uh, differences between neighborhood pixels okay that means here 0.5 is multiplied with the summation over summation over the differences between pi minus pi plus 1 okay so here pi is uh, one pixel in the neighborhood local neighborhood and pi plus 1 is another pixels in the local neighborhood now we get the difference uh, difference may, may difference may be positive or negative so that is why we take the absolute value of this that means we are interested about the uh, do, we are interested about the getting the difference of difference of uh, any two pixels in the neighborhood uh, we basically ignore the uh, sign of this uh, sign of this difference that means it may be a positive sign it may be a negative sign but that is why we are taking the absolute value of this difference okay that means this difference is calculated over uh, uh, over uh, the local neighborhood okay so here i will vary from 1 to 8 that means if we define a local uh, neighborhood or a 3 by 3 window uh, for every pixel in the uh, skeleton image of the fingerprint then uh, we can see here p is the center pixel and from uh, p1 uh, to p8 are the local neighborhood pixels around the center pixel p okay so for every pixel in the skeleton image uh, we will uh, define this uh, local neighborhood or uh, 3 by 3 window in the 3 by 3 window our objective is to uh, get the crossing number for the center pixel okay now this uh, crossing number for the center pixel will be obtained by this uh, by this given equation okay now uh, we can obtain the crossing number uh, from uh, 0 to 4 okay now for every crossing uh, for every for every value that is uh, calculated from this crossing number method uh, represent some points in the fingerprint okay so when we get the crossing number 0 so here 0 means the isolated point so isolated point is the is not uh, is not the legitimate or uh, valid minusia points when the crossing number is found to be 1 then uh, then, uh, then this point uh, this center pixel or center uh, pixel point will be called the valid minusia point that means this center pixel will represent uh, the uh, region d okay that means regenerating of some ridge in the uh, in the skeleton fingerprint image so uh, that means in the local neighborhood only one pixel that is p4 will be connected with the center pixel p when the crossing number will be found to be 1 when the crossing number will be found to be 2 that means this is the continuous point this is the continuous point on some ridge in the skeleton image okay and when the crossing number will be found to be 3 that means uh, the center pixel is connected with the three neighborhood uh, three uh, neighborhood pixels in the window 3 by 3 window so here we can see that the figure b uh, represents the crossing number 3 where the center pixel p is connected to p4 p6 and p8 that means uh, these three lo local neighborhood pixels are connected to the center pixel 
that means uh, this this is uh, this is uh, definitely a point which represent the uh, which represent ridge bifurcation so in ridge bifurcation ridge is found to be a shape as y structure okay so uh, when three pixels three local neighborhood pixels will be found to be connected with the center pixel then the crossing number will be found to be 3 and when the crossing number will be found to be 3 then uh, that means the center pixel will represent the uh, ridge uh, bifurcation okay and when the crossing number will be found to be 4 then the uh, center pixel uh, will be uh, center pixel will represent the crossing point or the intersecting point that means when two ridges will cross to each other then only that uh, intersecting points will be generated and that intersecting point will be represented by the center pixel that means four neighborhood pixels in the uh, three by three window will be connected uh, to the center pixel okay so when four pixel four such neighborhood pixels within three by three window will be connected to the center pixel then only we can infer that that infer that the center pixel p uh, represent the represent the crossing point or the intersecting point uh, between uh, uh, crossing of two ridges any questions from this part yes sir sir uh, for the goal image we have uh, different different uh, cn values for each three by three uh, each three by three uh, what we say matrix like for uh, sir, similar the, image this the, this three by three window is nothing but the neighborhood okay we call this is neighborhood and this neighborhood or window or we can say mask we can say kernel this is basically a kernel or window okay so this uh, crossing number method employs three by three window and this three by three window is defined for every every pixel in the skeleton image in the thin image okay that means if uh, uh, if the black pixel that means the in the earlier uh, step we have seen that uh, the um, ridges represent the black pixels okay that means for all such black pixels we will consider this 3 by 3 window or 3 by 3 kernel and within this window there will be one center pixel and around the center pixels eight neighborhood pixels will be there and depending upon the value of these uh, eight neighborhood pixels we will obtain the crossing number for the center pixel okay yes sir that's what i'm saying that for uh, every pixel there would be a different cn value yes like, for every uh, every so black pixel every black pixels there will be different cn value so then sir uh, uh, it may be possible that at the edge of the pixel uh, the edge of the uh, that one edge of the 3 by 3 will give uh, one solution and another uh, center of uh, 3 by 3 will give another solution like one will give cn value 2 one will give cn value 3 then how would we decide that which one is continuation point or which one is uh, the uh, what we say the ridge crossing point or the ridge ending point there is a simple uh, there is a simple inference inference means uh, whenever the uh, crossing point is found to be 2 okay so this infers that the center pixels is no, is not uh, the valid minutia that's point. a ridge continuation point ha, that is the continuation point that means the yes, this is the continuation of continuation of pixels over some ridges in the skeleton image Isn't it? Yes, sir. So, uh, if if we consider the edge point, edge point, uh, if we consider the figure A, okay, in figure A, if we consider the edge point, that is the top left corner point. So, if we consider the top left corner point, then uh, we can uh, obtain a three by three window around this point. That means yes, how sir. many? How many? How many points from the fingerprint will be inside in the three by three window? Can you say that? If we took the top right uh, corner, like right, that's the yeah, top left corner. Zero. Yes, this is the uh, this is the point where the x x component is zero, y is zero. That means x coordinate is zero, y co y coordinate is zero. 
Yes. We can't have any three by three from. Uh, yes. Like why? 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 As, we having it as a center, we can't have any three by three. But we can have a three by three at a, is no, it. Uh, no, we, we will. We will have a zero padding. We will have a zero padding around uh, this around this uh, fingerprint image. Sir, but we have, we need uh, eight uh, pixel around it, na, sir. Let me explain. If we if we if we consider the top left corner point as the center point of the three by three window, then this three by three window is defined defined around this uh, center point. Okay, so we will obtain P uh, P P two P one. So we obtain P. P1, P8, and P7 pixels. P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 are missing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 are missing. Okay. Now, in place of P2, P3, P4, P5 pixels, we simply pad the zero. That means zero padding will be done. So that I did. In, in place of in place of the in place of the original pixels values. Uh, for P two, P three, P four, P five, P six, we will make the zero padding. Okay, and this zero padding will decide about the uh, uh, about the uh, about the validity of this uh, center pixel. That means so the average uh, endpoint will give a regenerating. Yeah, it is regenerating. Basically, it is regenerating since. Uh, that means one 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 pixel will be there in the uh, inside the three by three window, so that will be connected to the center pixel. That means uh, this is the P eight pixel. Okay, so P eight pixel will be found to be connected to the center pixel. So the top left corner point is basically a uh, basically a regenerating. Okay, so that is why the crossing number will be found to be one. And uh, since only one pixel. Only one legitimate black pixel will be found inside this three by three window. Therefore, one pixel will be connected to this center pixel. As the top left corner point, we consider the top left corner point as the center pixel. And around the center pixel, we obtain three by three window. And instead of taking the original pixel, but since the original pixels values are missing for five different pixels from P two to P six, therefore. In place of the in place of these pixels, uh, we can uh, we can obtain the zero padding, and with those zero padding, uh, we can uh, obtain the crossing number. We can clearly see that there are only two legitimate black pixels inside the, this three by three window, and all the rest of the rest of the five pixels are not the legitimate pixels. They are forcefully uh, we are forcefully uh, incorporating these points. They are not the legitimate uh, fingerprint points, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, another doubt, sir. Uh, uh, we didn't discuss about the method to remove that false uh, Manisha points. Okay. 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 now you tell me first uh, can you guess how to uh, how to obtain or how to identify this uh, false minutia structures mm, so maybe by the length of the uh, ridges or the no, length we, which is obtained we we actually know we actually know these are the false minutia points okay or spurious points so during post pro post processing uh, we should remove these uh, false minutia structures so that uh, when we when we extract the minutia points uh, we should not consider these structures as the legitimate minutia points okay so uh, there is a method we can scan we can scan the skeleton image from left to right we start from uh, the position 0 comma 0 okay horizontally then we uh, scan the scan each and every pixel horizontally Okay, that means the first row will be done, then second row will be done, then third row will be done. So whenever we will find this type of structures, we simply discard those structures. Sir, uh, how we identify first? Like, what is the property they hold? The property they 
how many if we if we consider the spar okay if we consider the first uh, false minus gear structure spar then uh, what you can see here you can see two ridges inside the two ridges we obtain a small segment of small segment of curve okay and this curve has two uh, end points okay if such points uh, if such points is obtained such uh, such uh, small segment is obtained during the scanning process then we simply discard this point simply discard this structure these are the structure that is why that is why these structures are already defined okay and this structure represent the false minusia points or false minusia structures so we can train when we train the fingerprint image we should include these structures also so that uh, during training the algorithm should learn about these structures and whenever the algorithm will learn about these structures then only uh, they can identify the algorithm can identify these are the false minusia structures these are the false minusia points so whole lot of scanning is involved in this process so different types of scannings we need to incorporate to identify the false minusia structures so scanning process will give you to identify these um, false minusia structures so there is no there is no certain way to obtain this uh, false minusia structures so, so if we if we if we study the if we study the property of this uh, false minusia structure then we need to study the geometric geometric property of these structures what are the geometry that are involved in these structures okay then only we can uh, we can identify these structures then uh, identification of these false minusia structures can only be done through scanning process so if we go through the scanning process over the skeleton image then only we can uh, obtain this type of structures and whenever we obtain this type of structures we simply discard or remove these points so before minusia extraction or during minusia extraction we can obtain this type of structures in any way do you think these structures represent the legitimate minusia points we know the property of minusia points we know the property minusia points means regending and ridge bifurcation do you consider this structure is uh, this structure represent regending and ridge bifurcation if we consider a small uh, uh, like the like uh, in the minusia extraction if the, if they are still there then uh, it may be possible for a 3 by 3 matrix uh, they would also no, give no. Uh, uh pseudo result of manisha uh, yeah, yeah yeah so we have to first remove it then only we can uh, implement manisha extraction as uh, they will also thing, one author thing, as uh, one of the regenerating yeah one thing i can say about that that 100% correct legitimate manisha points cannot be extracted that means some points will be there those are spurious points spurious manisha points like in case of triangle if we consider this triangle so every time we, when we uh, go for the scanning so uh, the above point may consider as the ridge bifurcation because at this point two ridges are two ridges are emerging okay from this point so uh, from this point two ridges are uh, bifurcated so if we if we continue the scanning process then we see this And these two uh, bifur two bifurcated uh, ridges are again uh, meeting at some uh, some point. Okay, so after scanning, after continuing the scanning process, we can uh, we can uh, see that these two bifurcated ridges are not actually the valid minusia point. They represent the minusia points. Okay, that means from that bifurcated point, two ridges are emer two ridges are emerging. and meeting at some point some other point okay and uh, since uh, these two bifurcated ridges are meeting at some point therefore uh, the first point cannot be considered as the minusia point so after uh, after continuing after continue the scanning process we can 
obtain this triangle structure otherwise this is not possible to identify the identify this triangle as a false minutia structure every time we will consider this triangle as the valid minutia point okay but in case of hole in case of spike in case of uh, spar so we can easily uh, we can easily identify this uh, false minutia structure but in case of triangle it is difficult to identify this is the false minutia structure or false minutia point so this type of this type of structures may be included in the set of minutia uh, legitimate minutia points so some points may be there some spurious points may be there always this is not a big issue but uh, most of the points uh, will be the legitimate minutia points any other questions no sir not right now i will ask in the end of the lecture okay 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 now after uh, minutia extraction the last step is the matching okay so in matching matching of minutia points consists of three steps one is the alignment correspondence and score generation so in alignment we determine the geometric transformation between two minutia sets so that they are in the same coordinate system that means what happens when you obtain two different minus uh, two different fingerprint image from the same person that may and uh, two different time stamps that means one fingerprint image is obtained uh, uh, today okay and after 6 months the second fingerprint image is obtained and after obtaining the second fingerprint image we will go for the matching at some point that means uh, during uh, during uh, some tra online transaction or banking transaction so after 6 months when that person will go to the bank for uh, for some banking transaction that after 6 month that person uh, from that person a fingerprint will be op obtained a fingerprint will be captured and that fingerprint will be match with the uh, fingerprint which was taken before 6 months okay that means uh, that person may uh, that person will place the same finger on the uh, sensor plate okay now uh, during placement of the finger so when the finger uh, uh, finger is deviated at some point that means devi deviation uh, may be uh, done a 15 degree deviation or a 20 degree deviation or 45 degree deviation then uh, the there will be a, a rotation deviation that means the in terms of rotation two fingerprint will be obtained to differently so from the same person we are obtaining the two different fingerprint image but due to their misalignment uh, or uh, or the rotation problem we obtain two different fingerprint okay so now we need to we need to uh, register the register the two fingerprint images so registration process is called the alignment process basically so we need to align these two fingerprint images in the same coordinate system that means uh, we need to uh, we need to consider one fingerprint it as the template uh, template image or reference template and another will be called the query template that means the query template uh, is obtained after 6 months and uh, uh, reference template uh, reference template was obtained before 6 months okay so reference template is basically stored in the database so from uh, reference fingerprint to image we obtain the reference minutia points and this reference minutia point set is stored in the database so alignment process basically transform the uh, transform the um, fingerprint image in the same coordinate system so how it is done we will discuss that so this is a transformation based one uh, two finger since the due to rotation uh, due to deviation in the rotation rotation we obtain two different fingerprint image and two different fingerprint image when these two different fingerprint image are obtained from the same person then we need to uh, we need to go for the geometric trans transformation and this geometric transformation gives us the same coordinate system so in the same in that same coordinate system we represent or we align 
these two uh, these two fingerprint images okay and then uh, the next step is the correspondence so here in the correspondence uh, step we form the pairs of corresponding minutia okay and in the final steps code generation here we obtain the uh, here we obtain the matching proximity or match, match score which is based on the corresponding minutia point so here we can see a diagram for matching so here we are taking the template minutia set and query minutia set then we find the alignment so alignment uh, in the alignment process we obtain uh, a common coordinate system in that common coordinate system two uh, two template uh, two uh, minutia sets are aligned with each other okay and then we may uh, then we are making the pairing of minutia points in the pairing of minutia points after pairing of minutia points we obtain the we obtain the uh, we obtain a set of uh, set of uh, pairing minutia points and this set of um, pairing minutia points will lead us to the matching proximity or matching scores based on the corresponding minutia points now this alignment is done based on the hub transform algorithm what is the hub transform algorithm so what hub transform algorithm does if we consider two different points okay x1 y1 and x2 y2 then uh, then uh, we can transform this uh, and these two points are given in the xy plane okay so x coordinate and y coordinate so in the xy plane these two points are placed now we change this x coordinate and uh, xy coordinate system into another coordinate system that will be called ab coordinate system how this is done we know that y equals to mx plus c is the equation of the line now in place of in place of m we will write we will write a okay in place of c we will write b now in when we transform this uh, uh, we transform the we transform the equation of this uh, uh, line then uh, we will obtain another equation in terms of b that means we will write then b equals to something which will be on the right hand side of the equation okay so that in term whatever we are writing in terms of a and b that represent another coordinate system okay so this is basically this is basically uh, done by hub transform algorithm so hub transform algorithm uh, basically transform the xy plane into another uh, plane that is called ab plane or uh, some we can say we can say mn plane or uh, we can give some a better name to this plane but generally hub transform does the transformation of one coordinate system into another coordinate system so in that uh, transform coordinate system two fingerprint images will be found uh, aligned to each other okay that means the second fingerprint image will be aligned based on the first fingerprint image that means the first fingerprint image will be considered as the reference fingerprint image and according to the reference fingerprint image we will decide the deviation of the minutia points of the second fingerprint image so all that uh, has been all that has been discussed in this algorithm here you can see the algorithm in the input we are taking two minutia sets okay so in the first minutia sets we are, we are having the m number of minutia points in the second minutia set we are having n number of minutia points okay so here uh, first uh, m number of minutia points uh, vary from i here represent which is represented by i so here every minutia point is represented by i okay and the uh, and minutia point in the second set is represented by j so i is, i varies from 1 to m j varies from 1 to n and in the output what we get in the output we get the transformation parameters so transformation parameters nothing but the deviations so deviations deviations of the location that is uh, x uh, in terms of x y and uh, deviation of the rotation that is the orientation theta okay so for i equals to 1 to m and for i uh, j equals to 1 to n 
so we can obtain the delta theta what is delta theta represent the delta theta represent the deviation between the orientation of the corresponding two points we can say say here yeah, since uh, for every i we can obtain the deviation for all the j that means for every i means for every i in the first minutia set okay so if we uh, if we consider one minutia point in the first minutia set and all the minutia point in the second minutia sets then the deviations will be calculated in terms of orientation and this orient this deviation of orientation is represented by delta theta okay so here de delta theta uh, gives us the uh, theta t uh, theta i t uh, minus theta j q okay so here uh, we get uh, the difference between two orientations okay that means one orientation of the uh, orientation of the one minutia point in the first set uh, so we get the difference uh, from uh, we dim, we get the difference of all uh, minutia points of the second minutia set from one minu from one from uh, orientation of the one uh, minutia points in the first set okay so this is the vector so this will give us the vector so theta delta theta is the vector of the orientation uh, differences okay and next we get the uh, delta x so de delta x and delta y gives the deviations of the x coordinate and y coordinate and uh, uh, then uh, we obtain the accumulator array a so in the accumulator array a we uh, we can keep the all the devi all the uh, deviation in terms of uh, location x y and uh, orientation theta okay so this accumulator will collect all such deviations uh, between two sets of minutia points okay so what it returns it returns the location of peak in a so here we can see that uh, in the image there are two images a and b and the third image c gives a bright spot here the bright spot means this bright spot bright spot uh gives the that means this uh, represent the majority of the votes that are collected uh, by this bright spot okay that means this gives us the uh, peak peak of the location so peak of the location represent that uh, we will consider this point we will consider this uh, we will consider this point uh, as the uh, next point okay so this next point means the transformation parameters what what are the actual transformation transformation parameters that is uh, that will give us this bright point that uh, that to be calculated in the uh, alignment algorithm okay next is the minutia descriptor so uh, here you can see there are three uh, there are three images so uh, figure a figure b and figure c so figure uh, a contains how many minutia points eight minutia points okay and figure b contains seven minutia points and figure c contains uh, seven minutia points okay now if we align if we uh, if we uh, go for the alignment of uh, figure a and b then how many points will be matching or how many points will be paired if we consider figure a and figure b then we will consider figure a with figure c there are six in uh, a and b okay and if we if we if we compare a with uh, figure a with figure c then how many points will be coming how many pair of point, minutia points will be coming then two two okay now uh, we can uh, we can get the proximity by multiplying the uh, multiplying the percentage of having the minutia pair 
in a pair of images that means uh, if, if, since here we are getting six points in the figure a that means six or seven points six points six points okay six points in figure a and six points in figure b that means if we if we go for the pairing of figure a and figure b then there will be a six uh, pair of minutia points that will be found to be matching okay that or we can say those points are the match uh, minutia points now we can get the proximity by uh, uh, by multiplying the percentage of having the pairing minutia points in both the images so what does this mean the meaning of this statement is we will write 6 by 8 in case of figure a we will write 6 by 7 in case of figure b that means 6 by 8 into 6 by 7 so this will be multiplied okay so we will get the we will get some proximity now this will be compared with 6 by 8 6 by 8 into uh, if we consider figure a with figure c then three points are matching in case of figure c when we compare figure c with figure a okay that means 3 by 8 into 3 by 3 by 7 so which is coming better when we compare a with b and uh, again we we compare a with c so in which case you are getting the better proximity can you tell me that in which case we are getting the better proximity in the yeah. in the first case we are getting 6 by 8 that uh, multiplied by 6 by 7 okay in the second case we are getting the proximity as 6 by eight, uh, 3 by 8 uh, uh, into 3 by five, 3 by 7 so which will give us the better proximity a and b sir a and b that means b will be found to be the true match of a so a, a here c c is not the true match of a okay that means pairing will be made between a and b so pairing will not be made between a and c because depending upon the proximity value we can decide that depending upon the proximity value and moreover depending upon the true pairing of minutia points we can decide about the true match of the fingerprint that is to be accepted or rejected by the fingerprint verification system isn't it so here we can have the have this minutia pairing algorithm so in the input we are taking two minutia sets okay and transformation parameters that is delta theta delta x and delta y these are the transformation parameters okay so transformation parameters means you know what this is the deviations basically so this devi all these deviations are uh, collected in the accumulator cap uh, in capital a okay and uh, in the output we will have the list of paired minutia now uh, initially uh, we will set the flags for uh, uh, for the first minutia set and for the as well as for the second minutia set okay and uh, we will take a count uh, a variable uh, another variable account as zero okay and list as empty so this list will give us the paired minutia points okay so for uh, we can write i equals to uh, 1 to m for j equals to 1 to n and uh, we are making this flag zero if the flags both the flags are zero and distance is found to be uh, between minutia i and j is less than td here td is the threshold okay threshold means this threshold is uh, threshold is determined from the training set okay and this threshold is nothing but will be compared with the deviations of deviations of the locations okay so that is why td here td is written so d represent the distance so this distance is this uh, this uh, distance is obtained or the deviation of the distance 
is obtained from the transformation parameters so already we have obtained the transformation parameters that is del x and del y and uh, this del x and del y uh, will be compared with td so td is the uh, global threshold uh, for the deviation of the distances and uh, we are uh, we are having another we are having another threshold that is called tr here tr is threshold for the deviation in the rotation rotation okay so uh, if uh, we are making the flags uh, both the flags zero and distance is found to be less than td and rotation deviation is found to be tr then we are making both the flags one and uh, count is incremented by one okay we initially we made count as zero and uh, list was empty now we are making count uh, is incremented by one okay and uh, uh, list of the count will have the list of the count will have the pair of minutia points if the if i and j both are the uh, both are the minutia points which are obtained from two different minutia sets then we are making this pairing and this pairing is found to be the legitimate minutia points pairing and that to be included in the list of count okay and this list will be returned that means after having a number of or a set of pairing minutia points in the list then then the list will be returned and this list will represent the true uh, true minutia uh, match pairs okay so here you can see that the true matchings are represented by the uh, uh, a correspondence uh, straight line so they are making the correspondence so true matchings are making the correspondence and uh, those are represented by the blue line here blue straight line okay so here you can see two different pair of uh, fingerprint images and uh, red marks uh, represent the minutia points and uh, between uh, two sets of minutia points uh, uh, true pairing uh, true pairing has been made okay and this true pairing will represent the true match between uh, two sets of uh, minutia points so here match score uh, matching score is generated so as i already uh, uh, told how to uh, get the matching scores or matching proximity by having uh, the percentage of true uh, percentage of true uh, match pair uh, in uh, each pair of uh, fingerprint images any questions from here If you have any questions, you can ask me now. Uh, no, sir. And uh, today I will make an announcement. Announcement is that uh, that uh, in the next week I will uh, take your exam. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so the is the syllabus, syllabus uh, until today, whatever we have covered until today, that will be so syllabus in the what exam. What kind of questions, sir? Questions. So no, uh, no theoretical questions will be there. Only analytical questions, some analysis and problems will be there. Sir, so can we have some sample questions, sir? Sample questions uh, you can for get. Practice, uh, you can get sample questions from central library if you ask them to send uh, the soft copy of the question they may uh, send you the questions paper so which question we have to ask from them which questions means biometric like, sir, what we have what we have to uh, ask the central library you can write the central library professor in charge of central library and ask him for the co biometric question paper for mtech csc Okay. Okay, sir. We will do. 
so you can uh, you can ask him and uh, i think uh, you will uh, send you the short copy of the question paper short copy means the scan copy of the question paper okay okay sir so your exam uh, your exam will be held on uh, wednesday sir writing the mail to them and it's weekend also so they will reply uh, monday and something so uh, it would be nice if we get some more time no i can tell you from which part uh, you can have uh, your numerical problems and from which word you can have analytical analytical problems or from which word you can have some uh, some diff some types of uh, analysis or uh, or any other types of questions uh, that will be coming in the exam okay from rank level you can from rank level fusion you can expect uh, one or two numerical problems okay from rank level fusion you can expect one or two numerical problems from phase detection you can expect one analytical problem okay from fingerprint you can expect one numerical problem so but we haven't done any kind of numerical in such that no in the in in the in the rank level fusion i have already discussed the rank level fusion techniques yes sir we have uh, discussed all of this three the rank level the phase uh, phase detection and the uh, today's uh, high strength method if we, if i if i if i give any numerical problem from the high strength method so uh, don't you solve that problem yes sir yes. so from high strength method or majority voting okay about the count about the count method or weighted about the count method or base fusion rule so from that part uh, you can expect uh, one or two num num numerical problems okay so uh, so better to uh, better to better to have uh, go through all this uh, concept and uh, uh, get the concept very clearly okay so that uh, you can solve uh, numerical problems in the exam okay sir okay excuse me okay. sir yes 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 Excuse me, sir. Will you uh, please yeah. upload the PDF? Which, which sir, PDF, PDF, sir. Sir, this topic, oh, sir, no, uh, rank no, level no. fusion and. PDF, sir. We have videos, but uh, please, sir, upload the PDF as well. Uh, okay, I will do one thing. I will send you all the uh, study materials uh, that have been covered uh, until today uh, to your mail ID. okay i will send all the study materials to your mail id so uh, you can have from uh, them okay sir thank you okay 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 that's all for today so exam will start from exam will start from 5 5 o'clock uh, on wednesday okay sir okay 5 o'clock uh, start it will start from 5 o'clock but uh, duration of the exam is 1 hour okay okay sir okay sir another thing uh, sir uh, we discuss only one uh, like uh, algorithm in phase detection that is uh, yolo only am i right sir no yolo jones algorithm has also been discussed sorry sir Viola Jones algorithm. Yes, sir, sir, sir. One is Viola Jones algorithm, and another is Yolo algorithm. So both these algorithms sir, have been discussed. Sir, uh, but about the implementation. Ah, uh, about the implementation. So implementation details have been uh, discussed. No, sir. No, sir. Not like that. Like practical implementation. Practical implementation. So that yes, will be yes. practical practical implementation uh, you can uh, sir, like you can we all have requested you for the live uh, implementation no, sir yeah yeah at the end of yes, this sir. Course, at the end of this course i will show you some implementation of on biometrics okay 
okay sir so some implementation i will definitely show you and you can observe how biometric system works so not for all like uh, like uh, as we have finished the uh, phase so no, if, if, if if you if you if you uh, if you want to if you want to have uh, uh, get experience uh, with face detection how face detection works then you can uh, you can install uh, you can install the ready made uh, face detection algorithm or face detection application that is available on net okay you can download it uh, from net and then you can use so can you please guide us uh, like uh, how i can uh, i can send you the link for that okay yes sir. you can download you system. can download the face detection uh, application from that link and uh, run on your machine yes sir, yes sir. okay okay any other any other any other doubts sir total marks of it sir 25 what is okay so oh, can you tell me what are the divisions uh, in mtech csc division of marks sir 15 25 60 sir 15 25 and 60 okay ca1 ca2 and uh, then nsem yes sir okay okay uh, then uh, the exam uh, will be held uh, of 25 marks i think ca1 this is called the ca1 in ca2 yes. and 15 marks will be for home assignments okay sir okay yes sir yes sir okay okay that's all for today